forced it again. Why am I trying so hard? Man, he is gonna get us thrown out of here. Man, I wish I had that confidence though. I could never do that. Maybe once I'm in a relationship though, it'll all be all right. Got my skates. I hope I don't fall today. Oh, there he is. Oh, hey. Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. <sighs> Man, date number 57. How much longer can I do this? There's so much more I want. I'm worth more than this. I really want a family, you know? this kid. He's paying no attention to me again. When is he gonna get it? I'm not even mad at this kid. Why am I letting my home problems become my work problems? question for you today. How do you squeeze your toothpaste? That, my friends, could cause a lot of troubles at home depending on what kind of squeezer you are. You know, some people just kind of squeeze in the middle, some people just leave a mess. Depending on if you have kids at home, that could be an issue. And you're like, well, what's the point of this? The point of this is the fact that, you know, when you squeeze a toothpaste, you're leaving a certain impression on it. And we've been talking about the way you think and your brain response to certain ways that you think and so in a way is you gotta ask the question is what's squeezing your thought process like what's making you think a certain way and the scriptures talks about that and that's what we want to explore today is how do we think better where we have to think about what's squeezing our thoughts into a certain pattern of thinking and so scripture says this in Romans 12 beloved friends what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies I encourage you to surrender yourself to God, to be his sacred living sacrifices, and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life satisfying and perfect in his eyes. What's interesting is the scripture tells us to not conform, which is another words of saying, don't let the world squeeze you into a certain mold. The world is all the philosophies, all the thought process that keeps us away from the will of God. You know, the way we think is how we respond to life. And so God says, listen, if you really want my will, if you really want my purpose, if you really want to think better, live a healthier life, then don't let the world squeeze you. So you got to ask yourself the question is, who's squeezing you? 
For us as Christians, we believe that once you surrender your life to the Lord, the Holy Spirit should be the one now to begin to mold you and to shape you. And that's what he's saying here. He's saying, let His Spirit indwell and in you now begin the process of transforming you into the person that He created for you in the first place. The word transformation there is where we get the word metamorphosis. You know, metamorphosis is what, is what we learned about when we were in school. Remember studying science, how certain animals start a certain way, but they metamorph over time, they transform over time. For example, a grub that looks so weird and so disgusting over time becomes this beautiful butterfly. Well, that's the process that God is talking about here, that He wants to take us from mere grubs, really, and turn us into this beautiful butterfly if you allow Him to be the one to mold us, to shape us into His image, into His likeness. And so the question becomes, how do we do this? So we are transformed or metamorphosed into the will of God by the presence of the Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit comes to reside in us and begin the transformation process to renew the way we think and then in turn transform us into the image and likeness of God's will for our lives. And one of the scriptures says this is how it works. In Corinthians it says this, so all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. And so the goal is to go from glory to glory. In other words, from, from metamorphosis to metamorphosis to become more and more the person that He created us to be. And the way that works is that our minds has the power and the ability to shape our brain the way we're thinking, the way we're acting, the way we're behaving, it all starts with this process of inward transformation from our minds. But this, my friends, takes a lot of practice. It takes focus. You know, your mind is stronger than your body. In other words, you can dictate how you feel by the way that you focus and control your thoughts. And so this is not just gonna fall in our laps. This is something that we have to be willing to do by the help of the Holy Spirit. You see, circumstances are going to come. You cannot control them, but you can control how you respond to your circumstances. You know, Jesus was very honest with us. He says, in this world, you're going to have troubles, but take heed, take heart, he says, I have overcome the world, so can you. And he's talking about learning to apprehend your thoughts so your circumstances doesn't dictate how you're going to live your life. Because if not, we'll be all over the place. We can't control circumstances, but we can certainly control the way we react to every circumstance and situations that we find ourselves in. So we need to focus. Like I was saying from the beginning, who's squeezing? It's a tight squeeze to, to be in the will of God, to focus your mind every day to make sure that you are doing exactly what He called you to do. You know, Jesus puts it this way. Jesus said, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and His gates is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. So in other words, it takes some serious focus to be able to do the things that God has created us to do. It's not impossible, but it takes focus. And there's nothing more powerful than a mind that's made up. You see, when your mind's made up, no one can talk you out of something. If your mind's made up to not change, you won't change. But if your mind's made up to want to change, then nothing is impossible for those who want it. And so Jesus says, it comes down to your focus. It comes down to having this mindset that I want to be part of this narrow understanding of life. That it's not necessarily that he's saying that, you know, it's not about, you know, you can't do certain things. He's saying, you know, because it's a tight squeeze, there's some things that just doesn't fit into this lifestyle that He has for you. You know, it's like walking into a tight space. You know, not everything can, can fit into that. And that's what a focused life is. It's a tight space where you are thinking about every decision, every person that comes into your life. And there's some things that you just won't do because it doesn't fit the lifestyle that you want for yourself. And your mind is a precious computer that needs to constantly be fed the right things. 
And so Jesus says, that's the narrow road is when it comes to your focus, when it comes to your decision making, when it comes to the people that you allow into your lives, uh, that's going to make a, a major difference. You see, he says the road to, to, to hell is like a highway. Right? A lot of times we think about hell being a place, but Jesus is like, it's a state of mind, right? You can be on a highway and, 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 and be stubborn and say, I'm just going to stay on this highway, or you can take an exit and, and find the right path. And so Jesus is saying, you have the choice to choose to bring heaven to you or, you, or, or you can stay on the road to hell. It all comes down to what you feed in your mind. You know, I believe this, that you can live on this earth by bringing heaven to it, or you can live on this earth in hell. And why not choose to be in the straight and narrow where you can see the will of God, when you can see the purposes of God in your life. But again, it's going to require some serious focus. And I would say that because it's such a tight squeeze, you need to stop doing certain things. It's just going to help you. It's not going to help you on this journey. For example, I would encourage you to stop negative self-talk. It's just not beneficial to want to live this life and keep talking yourself out of it. Because our words create worlds, right? We have the power, the Bible says, to speak life or death. So I encourage you to stop saying things like, I will never, or I'm, I'm not that kind of person, or I'm always failing, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a mistake. These are things that we need to stop saying because these, these are self-prophecies, right? We need to speak life. We need to speak the things that we want to see into our being. So why not say things like, I made a mistake, but I'm not a mistake. Why not say things like, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Why not say things like, I'm the head and not the tail. Why not say things that I'm more than a conqueror through Him who gives me the strength. And so we have that power, the ability to begin to shape our thinking by the words that come out of our mouth. Our vocabulary is powerful. And so do everything you can to not bring negative self-talk into your life. But also, I would encourage you, beware of some toxic people that you need to be uh, aware of the fact that they maybe they shouldn't be speaking into your life. This is a tight, tight squeeze. And some people shouldn't have the ability to speak into your life if they're not in a good place. And so a lot of times for us to walk this walk, we just have to be aware of the voices that we're allowing to come into our lives. And so I would encourage you, discern uh, the people that you allow to speak into your life. A lot of times people are just coming from a place of brokenness and because they're broken, they're just going to be negative. I always like to say this, that hurt people will always hurt people, but heal people will bring healing to other people. So beware of the toxic people that come into your life and try to speak negativity and try to hold you back. You know, sometimes you're trying to do the will of God and, and they're making fun or they're trying to put you down. Listen, discern and say, man, I don't need those voices in my life. We have the choice to not let those people dictate the way we want to live our lives. But also I would encourage you, beware of toxic environments. Not every place is for you. Like I said, this is a tight squeeze. And so you have to be aware of the places that you're going to be hanging out if you really want to see the will of God being developed in your life. For example, I had a friend that, that I used to see a lot, and every time I saw him, he told me he was struggling. You know, every time I saw him, he seems like he was struggling. But interesting enough, every time I saw him, he was basically hanging out in the same place. And sometimes the places we're hanging out may not be bad, but they're not necessarily good for us neither. So why not be aware of some of these places that you find yourself in? Ask yourself the question, when you walk away from these places, do you feel better? You know, is it benefiting you? You know, there's a scripture that says, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial, right? If it's not going to help me walk this walk, be on that tight squeeze that I'm talking about, then it's not for me. So we have to be very aware of the voices, the words, and the environments that we spend our time in if we're going to see the will of God in our lives. So Susie's been cutting my hair for 10 years, and um, she's actually one of the first people that planted seeds about coming in new life. 
one thing I love about coming to Susie to get my hair cut is you're not just getting a haircut. You actually get to experience God sitting in her chair. I love that, like, you know, I come in expecting to get a haircut and, you know, us women, like, we want to look beautiful, but we actually leave feeling beautiful from the inside out. I just think it's so awesome that, you know, God is using her and she's allowing God to use her to build people up and to bring people to the church and like, this is her ministry. So I've been a hairstylist for 16 years. When I was little, it, it's like so cliche. Everybody says that, I'm playing with my Barbies and you know, but that was my thing. Like I did, I cut all my Barbies hairs and I just wanted to do it. I was like obsessed with hair and like, um, you know, the colors and just cutting it. And it's just something I always wanted to do. And I figured like, I love to talk to people and stuff so I could talk to people and I could make them look beautiful. And so every time before um, I come to work, I pray. So I'm in the car and I'm praying and I pray for him to use me. So I have this job where people sit in my chair and they have nowhere to go and they have to listen to me. It's so easy for me to experience God at my work, I feel, because half of the time they sit down and they're like, oh, I had such a long day or this is happening and that's happening. Yeah. and that's my chance to get in there and like before I knew God I would just like like yeah you know feed into their drama and just be like oh that stinks or like you know what a jerk and like you know now I share God with them one of my clients I've been doing her for years and um, she um, she's really close to her parents so, you know, I go to get her and immediately she just starts bawling. So she tells me that her mother passed away. And um, so, you know, I tell her I'm sorry. And I was like, God, just like use me and just give me the right words to say to this girl, to comfort her, to um, just, just make her feel like at peace. And like, how do you tell somebody it's okay? I go back to the chair and God just gave me the words. Like I was just comforting her. So before she left, she was like, you know what, I just wanna tell you that I wasn't gonna to come to this appointment because you know, of my mom, but um, something just told me to come and I came and I'm so glad that I came because I feel so much better. Like when I walked in, I was a mess and now I'm like, I can't even describe how I feel. Like she was at peace, she was like laughing and it, it made me feel good that I could help her and just show her like, God just through just loving her and just showing her that I cared and well I would say to people that want to experience God um, like at work or anywhere would be just pray that God uses you just ask him to use you and if you ask him to use you he's gonna use you I tell people you know buy this product it's amazing or go here to the store it's awesome this restaurant it's awesome so like why wouldn't I if I know there's this you know, this savior, Jesus, and he's helped me and he's given me so much. Why wouldn't I share that with people? You know, you don't get what you don't aim at. You know, Jesus said, if you seek, you'll find. If you knock, the door will be open. So it's, it all comes down to being focused and to being committed to staying on the straight and narrow. And sometimes, we know life gets chaotic, situations get chaotic, things around us seems like a mess. Those are the times to really stop and seek the Lord. I wanna share the scripture with you from Psalm 94, 19 says, whenever my busy thoughts were out of control, the soothing comfort of your presence calmed me down and overwhelmed me with delight. And so, throughout life, you're gonna have these chaotic moments chaotic situations. I remember I used to work in a group home for troubled teens ages 15 to 20. And there were many days, man, that I was just in chaos in my mind, in turmoil, uh, about to make some dumb decisions. And what I would do is I would go on bathroom breaks, sit there and pray. And I would ask the Holy Spirit to bring peace, to bring perspective and to bring wisdom in those situations. And that's what we have to do from day to day. Again, circumstances are gonna come, but we can bring the presence of God to those circumstances so we can make better decisions. And so I wanna leave you with some practical things you can do every day to train your mind, to think the right way, 
to think better in order for you to live better. First thing I would encourage you to do is to start your day with God. I believe the first five minutes of your day is the most sacred five minutes that's gonna shape the rest of your day. I believe you can have good days on purpose, not let your feelings take you all over the place or circumstances dictate how you're gonna live. But if you start five days, five minutes every day in prayer, just the moment you wake up, just thank God that you're up. Remember, someone else didn't wake up, you did. So there's a reason why you're alive and God wants you to take full advantage of your day. So take a moment and thank the Lord and, 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 and give Him your day. There's a Bible app that I encourage you to get on your phone. There's a Bible verse every day. I love to start my day by reading that scripture and just let that be my focus for the day. And then maybe at that moment or later on in the day, you can read the rest of that chapter to just keep you centered, to keep you focused, that you're gonna have a good day with the Lord and you're gonna do it intentionally. And the second thing I would encourage you to do is to select your playlist. You see, one of the most powerful ways to shape your mind is through music. Music is powerful. You know, Plato one time said, if you wanna get a message across to the world, put it through a song, because songs have a way of shaping us and science has proven the power of music. Worship music to me is the soundtrack of your soul. You know, learn to, to find music that's going to benefit you and that's going to inspire you to walk with the Lord. And so on your way to work, you're worshiping, you know? And if you get to be in a place of work where you're able to have your own music, play some worship music. You know, let that center you, let that focus you. You know, many times in, in the Bible, when someone would want to hear from God, what they do is the first thing they would do, they worship to create that environment, to create that atmosphere that the presence of God can come and speak to you. And the third thing I would encourage you to do is to affirm yourself. Remember, there's power in your words. There's this thing I've been saying lately. How about we get better by 1%? It may not happen all at once, but each and every day I can get better by 1%. So why not say things like today, I'm gonna get better by 1%. And I believe the Holy Spirit co signs that prayer and is with you when you affirm yourself. So take a moment and learn to speak life over yourself. Yes, you made a mistake, but you're not a mistake. You know, yes, you made a fail, but you're not a failure. You know, you are who you are by the grace of God. And so speak life over yourself every single day. The fourth thing is, at some point in your day, you need some quality time with the Holy Spirit. You know, they say it takes about seven to 12 minutes to shape your brain each and every day. And as you know, you know, it's about repetition. The power of repetition is powerful. So each and every day, if you take seven to 12 minutes, and you just sit with the Holy Spirit, right? And you invite Him to come and mold you and shape you into the person He created you to be. Maybe that's the time to take that Bible verse and read the rest of the chapter, you know, and let it sink in, let it speak to you, let it minister to you. I remember, when we first got married, uh, we lived in, in a one bedroom apartment and we had two kids right away. And I remember many times I would go in the bathroom, sit in the bathtub, put the fan on so drain out the noise and just spend time with the Holy Spirit. The thing is, if you don't spend time with the Holy Spirit, it's gonna affect everything else that you do. It affects your marriage, it affects your parenting, it affects your business if you have one, it affects the way you, you treat people. So it's critical that you spend time with the Holy Spirit so He can center you, so He can give you perspective, give you wisdom. I believe it makes you a better parent, it makes you a better person, it makes you uh, think better, but also make better decisions with your, with your life. So take some time every day, seven to 12 minutes. It's not about the quantity of time as it is about the quality of time, you know? He's a person and He's right there with you, speaking back to you as you give Him time to speak to you. And then the last thing that I would encourage you to do is every day feed your brain the right food. You know, we all know that sometimes life gets busy uh, and, and sometimes we're on the run and we grab that fast food, but we know that fast food never heeds good results. It's the same thing with our brain. We need to stop and think about, you know, our entertainment, what do we watch, you know, what do we listen to? All those things affect the way that we think, the way that we feel, you know. So I highly recommend that you are selective about the things that you bring into your life. If you're gonna watch a movie, watch something that's gonna edify you or, or a show 
or, or if you're gonna listen to something, let it be all the things you want to make sure that it's gonna be healthy for your, for your well-being, you know? You only have one life to live, so why not be very selective about the things that's gonna come into your life? You know, I like to watch documentaries because I feel like I'm learning and I'm teaching my brain something. So every day, be selective about that. You know, learn to just feed yourself well because your mind is the headquarters of your entire life. You know, I believe this, all of us could be as close to God as we want to be. We are one prayer away from Him. You know, I love to come out to places like this because I'm able to just be one with Him. And so every time we do this program, we like to give you a chance to make Jesus the leader and savior of your life. Just take a moment and talk with Him. I believe that He can hear you exactly where you are right now. He's so personal, he's so real, that he will meet you exactly where you are. All you have to do is be honest and say, Lord, come into my life. I need you. I need you to center my thoughts. I need you to center my life. I need you to come and forgive me from things that I've done that I'm not proud of. And I need you to come and, and wash over me and cleanse me and restore me back to you. I want to live my life in the fullness of your will. I want to embrace the straight and narrow that you have for me. I want to, I want to get away from the highway to, to things that are destructive, that are, that are not good for me. And I pray today, Lord, that you would heal my heart, heal my soul, and empower me now to live my life in the fullness of your will. And teach me to train my mind every day so that I may become more and more like the person you created me to be. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, if you uh, like to know more about following Jesus, I wrote a small book just to help people uh, understand this journey. It's a journey and it's a relationship. And like any relationship, the more you invest in it, the more you grow. And so I wrote this book called The Basics. And if you email us, newnormal at newlifestylecoach.com, we would love to send you a book for free. It is our desire for you to grow in a relationship with Him. And if God spoke to you through this program, email us, we would love to hear from you. I would love to invite you to come and hang out with us live. We are a church located in New Bedford, Massachusetts. We have two Sunday morning services filled with uplifting music. We have kids programs for all ages and we have practical teachings inspired by the Bible to help you live a better life. So we would love to have you in person. If you live in the area, come check us out and check out our website at newlifestylecoast.com. And God bless you.